Good, what about costs? Because couldn't I do the exact same thing? Now I've got the task, can't I just put cost against it? In fact, couldn't I do it this way? And this is something worthwhile noting. Because if I costed three things, I would be able to really understand cost. The first one is internal, internal HR. The dollars for my internal resources. If I then worked out the dollars for my external HR, what's external HR do you think? What's that standing for? <coughs> yeah, outsourcing, consultants, contractors, etc. And then I'm going to use a toddism here. So it means you might not find it in any book, so you might want to write it down. EMC. EMC stands for Equipment, Materials and Consumables. So Equipment, Materials and Consumables. So when you look at that, why I, I found over the years it's better off to show those three is because I could answer anyone's questions. Let me give you an example. If this is column one, two and three, if someone says to you, tell me how much does it cost for all the human resources, what columns are you going to add? One and two. If I said, what's the cost of the non-human resource reserve? Three. But here's the question I often got. Because often, in particularly in government organisations, they've already got the money for the staff they employ. So they, all they have to do is go for more money for the external and the HR. So they kept saying, but how much more money do I need? Well, what were they asking for? Which two columns? Two and three. Does everyone understand that? If anyone didn't get to write down EMC, it stands for Equipment, Materials, Consumables. Now, <clears throat> once I get to the end of adding all these up, we call this, in project management, this is our direct cost. So the direct cost is effectively anything that's on the work breakdown structure, because I needed it directly attributing to tasks. I then come along and I add something called indirect. What's another word for indirect? Does anyone know? Starting with O. Overheads. Excellent. Can you give me an example of an overhead? Awesome. Office rental. You know when, you, uh, when someone rings up your organisation for your project team, they ring up the receptionist. Someone has to be paying for that receptionist, so there's an overhead cost for that. Insurance. People rich work in spaces where we work with really critical and troubled projects. So do you think our insurance for professional indemnity has to be very, very high? What do you think? Hugely, because we work where the trouble is. That's one of our key focus on areas. And of course the trouble often is around the people anyway. But when you look at it, when I'm training, do I still have to have that high insurance? Yeah, so it's an overhead cost. It's a cost of doing business. So often how organisations do it, they add a percentage. They might say plus 10% admin. Have you ever seen that written? Plus 10% admin. They're actually saying add the indirect costs. Because if I've got the plus 10% admin, for example, then together that actually gives me my project cost. Because a project cost is direct and indirect costs. But if I'm working for someone else, I have to add something. What's that called? Profit, yes. If you're a not-for-profit organisation, you still have to add something because you just don't work for nothing. So we just call it a margin. If you're working for a private company, you'll call that a profit margin. So we add the margin, and that's based on how much margin you want. Say, for example, it might be 20%. And if you then add all that up, that's what gives you the client's project budget. So the budget comes from the direct cost plus the indirect cost plus the margin. That gives us the total project budget that the client is paying for. When we look at costs later, we'll be also talking about contingency fund. Contingency fund is a reserve held for risks. And it's not held by the project manager, it's actually held by the project sponsor. Okay. Any questions about that so far? Because once we've got the estimation technique, you can see it's very easy when we've got the task, right, haven't we? Even just running a, a TV production, for example, you'd have to work out what equipment do I need, how many people do, we, do you need, etc., etc. That's just going to be setting out the task. That allows us then to determine what equipment, when do we have to have it, who's doing what. Costs are no different. We can then put a cost against each of the tasks. And here's the thing to note. Once I've got a cost on each of these at a task level, you can see that the task level adds up to give me what the cost of the report is. And then if I add up all the activities, I've got what we call the project budget. So costs are calculated at three levels. Task level, 
they add up to the activity level, and then all the activities add up, that gives me the project's budget.